Many people think that Rumpelstiltskin is a simple tale of Renee. A young girl makes a promise and is unable to deliver. Rumpelstiltskin, as heinous as his actions may be, but this is a sinister tale involving far more than a mischievous imp masquerading as a man. This story talks about an absentee father who brags and ultimately leaves. A king who only wants to add more wealth to his kingdom. And the unfortunate victim who is vulnerable yet will ultimately triumph because unconditional love always wins against all odds. This is True Crime Fairy Tales. The story of Rumpelstiltskin, fraud, greed, and triumph. Let's go. The story of Rumpelstiltskin starts out and we have a business owner. He's a miller and he's not doing very well. At the time, it was customary for a lot of people to look for ways to abandon their children. This Miller was of no exception. He had a very beautiful daughter and he made grandiose claims to a king. It just so happened that he was able to get the ear of the king, making grandiose claims that his daughter could do the impossible. The claims of being able to spin straw into gold was very intriguing. The king says, bring your daughter so that we may see and put her to the test. She's taken away from her home and the only things that she's ever known. She's left alone in a room filled with straw, a single spinning wheel there. Unable to do what her father had promised, she begins to weep. The king told her, Upon my return, if this is not all gold, then I will have to put you to death. So the impending doom of her own demise looms above. At this very moment, a little man presents himself and he asks her a very simple question. And he says, well, if I help you, because I know how to do this, what will you give me? She offers her necklace and he receives it as payment he begins to do the impossible and slowly the room turns from straw to gold. He works the spinning wheel like a master. The king returns, is very pleased, but it's not enough. So he's like, I'm going to place you in a larger room. I want you to repeat what you just did. I'll return. And if this is not gold, then you will be put to death. So again, the overwhelming prospect of her impending doom. The man returns and he asks, if I help, what will I get? She says, I have this ring. And he says, I'll take the ring. He does the impossible. The room is filled with gold. The next day, the king is ecstatic, but simply not enough. His greed has corrupted his very sense. He puts her in the largest room, filled with the most straw ever. This must all be turned into gold or you will face your impending doom. She's overwhelmed. She cries out. The man returns. He does the impossible. Before he does, he seeks payment. She's given all of her worldly possessions. He says, then I will only ask for your firstborn child. A truly sinister request. The miller's daughter feels as if this is the only prospect that makes sense. Unwilling to accept her untimely death. Feeling as if she can survive this opportunity. Perhaps in time, he may forget this rather audacious request on her young child's life. She agrees. And he works the magic of impossible. 
following morning, the king enters and is so overwhelmed with joy and pleasure. And he decides that he's going to marry the miller's daughter and make her queen. She's comfortable. And for a time, life is good. Shortly thereafter, she's pregnant and has a beautiful child of her own. The queen has long forgotten that promise that she had given to the little man. Basically saying that if he were to help her that one last time, all he asks is for her firstborn, instantly appears. The queen is simply dismayed, unable to process the prospect of giving up her child. She wails and she weeps, pleading, offering all manner of jewel and riches and wealth, the entirety of the kingdom even. He says, the only thing that would satisfy my thirst is a sacrifice of the living. Eventually, he feels compassion and says, if you can guess my name in three days, then you'll have your child. Now this is someone masquerading as a little man, but this is German folklore, so this is an imp, a demon. Not necessarily bad or good or evil, but just was bored, felt mischievous, basically a pocket-sized Loki, but far more cruel. The task is set. Guess the name of this man in three days and keep her child, or she'll have to honor the request and lose her child. She's frantic and she sends messengers out into the world and the villages and seeking unusual and odd names and new names and creative names. He returns the first day, she's unable to guess. The second day, unable to guess. Here we find ourselves in the eve of that final evening before he returns. For the third day and the attempt to guess the name. There is one special messenger who happened to return with a rather odd story, a story of being in the woods deep. One night, a little man dancing around a fire, laughing gleefully, singing a obscure song, which ended with the words, but my name is Rumpelstiltskin. The queen had never heard a name like that before, but something resonated within her. And she says, thank you. Overcome with anticipation, excitement, adrenaline, the prospect of finally knowing what his name is. He returns and after many attempts to guess, she says, I have one last name. She says, is your name Rumpelstiltskin? And we find ourselves seeing him in his true nature. He blows up and who told you my name and performs yet more impossible magic and tears himself apart limb by limb. Now the brother Grimms describe it as he tore himself from the middle in half out of rage. There are other variations that say he stomped away angrily into the forest out of the castle. But ultimately, she was able to keep her life, her lifestyle, her child, and Rumpelstiltskin was never heard from again. That would be the end, and they would live happily ever after. But let's break this story down very quickly, because there is a lot going on. And for the longest time, I feel that Rumpelstiltskin was blamed, but there were other culprits at play. And upon further review, I definitely think that's the case now. Even though Rumpelstiltskin was opportunistic and mischievous, it must be quite boring being a demigod or a demon or some manner of metahuman or something existing on the alternate plane. So every once in a while, a little bit of pain and misfortune must seem like a pretty good time. The mere fact that we can't spin straw into gold presented a golden opportunity a chance to show off his skills and acquire payment. No harm, no foul. But ultimately, the stakes were raised to a point where she had to offer something she was not willing to give up when the time came. And his true nature as an imp, as a demon, 
as depicted in German folklore, really begins to manifest itself. And here Rumpelstiltskin is only guilty of being who Rumpelstiltskin is. And his nature, unfortunately, has been used to promote this story in an erroneous manner. Here's what I think really happened. You had a father who was looking for clout, ambitious, and looking to become known and wanted money at any expense. I think he was initially paid off because this was a fascinating prospect, which is why she was told that if you don't honor on this commitment, you shall surely die. I think her father took the money and ran. Get rich quick scheme that involves your own flesh and blood. It just so happens that the demon comes along and decides to play and extend the narrative just a bit more. I think the virtue of the daughter, vulnerable. This is definitely a story of triumph because she had to be quick, resourceful, and she had to work against all odds. And even though there was fraud and greed, mischievous people at play, the virtue and sheer determination of the Miller's daughter to survive and the unconditional love provided the story, the time, and the place, and the example that even when things are darkest, even if it's sins of the father, even when you have the deck stacked against you, love will always triumph over hate, good wins over evil. And in my opinion, an evil father, an evil king, and an evil man all fell by the wayside thanks to the love and compassion of one Miller's daughter. This is True Crime Fairy Tales, the story of Rumpelstiltskin. I am Jaded Nerd, and we shall convene next time.